The wheels of the presidential airliner were running on Irish soil. John F. Kennedy was in the land of his forebears. This is the man whose great-grandfather somehow scraped together the four pounds for a sailing ship passage and emigrated to the United States. Wexford beckoned Mr. Kennedy on a sentimental pilgrimage. At nearby Dungan'stown is cherished the tiny homestead on which Patrick Kennedy turned his back 115 years ago. The hostess today was a second cousin of the president, Mrs. Mary Ryan, who farms there now. Many Kennedys are to be found in the district, several of them the president's cousins. He's Walt Disney, and he's here with Mrs. Disney to look for a leprechaun, the Irish fairy who keeps an eye on the hidden gold. Mr. Disney, what, give me some more details of your leprechaun hunt. Well, uh, I, I just hope that I can find that leprechaun with the uh, pot of gold, because I could really use that in Hollywood with <laughs> the cost of production going up the way it is. I'd really I... like to have it, you know, yes. come in very handy. I'm... How are you going to get it back through the customs? Well, that's something I am worried about. I think I'll worry about finding the leprechaun first. And then uh, if I am successful on that, well, then I'll worry about getting it through the custom. He might help you. Huh? He might help The leprechaun yeah. might have a way, yes. Three hours late, but still smiling, Princess Grace and Prince Rainier of Monaco are welcomed at Dublin Airport by the Honorary Consul General, Lord Killanin. Princess Grace, of course, is practically regarded as coming home. First call for the princess, whose family came from County Mayo, where all good Kellys come from, is of course on President de Valera. Amor, amor, amor. When you're away, there is no day, and nights are lonely. Very important people by the score arrive at London Airport, but this time it was somebody unique. In America, they call Cassius Clay, Cass the Gas. Now let's alter course, across the water to County Clare, where midway between Killarney and Connemara lies the little town of Ennis. For long, the mystery man behind the scenes, ambitious militaristic Perron, comes out into the open. From former President Farrell, Perron gets the usual embrace. In having advised the issue of a proclamation declaring the existence of a state of war with Japan. I'm happy to be back in Australia. I've seen many things and many places. And although every man can be forgiven for loving his own country best. So now, let's meet Gene Kelly. Gene, is a great pleasure to meet you and an unexpected one. You're on your way through to New York, are you? Yes, I, I am. Uh, I, I, I'm certainly glad to stop over in London, if only for a few hours. And we're shooting that in London, uh, Paris, and Granada. Spain and Hollywood, so it's it's pretty international. But uh, I, I'm I'm just dancing and singing and acting, and I have nothing to do with it except take orders. So. At Washington's White House, one of the veteran presidents of the world is welcomed by one of the newest. Eamon de Valera, father figure of the Republic of Era, meets President and Mrs. Johnson of the United States. This is no mere official visit of one head of state to another. There's so much Irish blood in America that the President of Era is more of a cousin than a foreigner, and America greets him accordingly. Did we say cousin? He's a native son, born 81 years ago in New York. 